Hey guys, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we're doing another fun, real scientific tool review. It's going to be the second one. Uh, today we're looking at the NOCO GB70 Jump Starter. Uh, here's the package for it. So, you know, full disclosure, NOCO sent me a message on YouTube and asked, would you like to review one of our jump starters? And I told him, absolutely. Uh, I'm always, uh, you know, looking for a good, reliable source of, you know, for dead batteries. Like, you see them all the time in the field, and you just want to hook up uh, either a jump pack or jumper cables or something to get uh, reliable voltage in the system so you can do your testing. So, up till now, I've been using this little guy the Rockford pocket power and uh, actually Eric O at South Main Auto did a review on this thing back in the day it's just a little guy like this comes with your clips and a whole bunch of different adapters which are actually very handy they've gotten me out of a lot of situations where you know you forget your cell phone charger or your laptop dies on the road or something like that so it is very handy uh, the only drawback I've seen from this guy is if your battery is really dead and this thing doesn't even recognize it on the actual jump pack there is a boost button so you know you plug it in attach it to your attach it to your battery and then you press the little boost button and the green light comes on but this times out in about 30 seconds so what if you have a dead battery and you just want to throw a jump pack on there and not start the car just do you know testing for like half an hour uh, this isn't gonna cut it so that's where I think the bigger NOCO boost pack I'll show you the, the size difference here this guy right here it's hefty it's like a brick compared to that little guy. You know, it's about, I don't know, it's at least three times the weight. So hopefully you'll have three times the, the charge capacity. And that's one of the things I want to look at in this review is how much charge does this thing actually hold and what's the current capability, you know, maybe for a small car it can start at 20 times but what about you know like a bigger truck or something um, is it is it capable basically <clears throat> so those are the two characteristics that we'll uh, try to determine uh, we'll do that on the bench to do some quantitative quantitative measurements and this thing I the feature that I already like is uh, similar to the pocket power it has a button so you turn it on and then this exclamation point when you hold it it actually kind of overrides you know the safety features and just puts out straight 12 volts for I believe indefinitely so we can just leave this on and see if it times out or something but this would be really handy to have in the field when you just want to put a jump pack on the car and and work on it and not worry about you know the pack timing out. So uh, that's that. First thing we got to do is charge this thing up because it says you know before the first oh there's there's the light before the first use charge it fully. Now the way to charge this apparently uh, it has two ways to charge it. Right here it says in either through a USB cable or through a special plug. Now, reading the, the user guide, okay, the little mini user guide, uh, the charging times, if you charge it through the USB cable, depends on your amperage, but it can be up to, oh, let's see, 28 hours. So you're going to be there more than, more than a day just charging your jump pack, uh, but you want to charge now. So the fast way to do it is the 12 volt let's see 
two to three hours at three amps. Okay, uh, that's more reasonable. Uh, but the thing is, the only way to get 12 volts to this thing, uh, they only provide you with, you know, this one charging cable. Well, technically two, but you know, we're not going to waste time with the USB charging since, since it takes so long. But this guy plugs into the boost pack, and then you have these two adapters. So this one will be the adapter that goes to your vehicle. So you plug this into your cigarette lighter and you have to have the car running because otherwise it'll just drain your vehicle battery if it's charging the boost pack. And you know, you plug this in and away you go. So it's very handy to have in the field. You know, if I'm done working on a car and I plug this thing in and it charges by the time, you know, just keep it on the charger all day long and uh, it'll be there, it'll be ready when, when you need it. However, right now I want to charge it from my you know wall socket and that is not an option. They, they don't provide you with you know an AC plug adapter. For example, the pocket power does come with you know a wall unit and the output of this guy it says 14 volts at 1 amp It'll focus. So this is a one amp charger. Uh, so something like this, you know, with three amps output, might be a little beefier. But um, I would say uh, this thing should come with a wall charger because you know charging it from your vehicle that is kind of limiting, uh, especially if you're a garage owner, for example, and you just want to use this, you know, as a jump pack. You're going to have it plugged into the wall. You're not going to have a car idling, you know, all day long just to charge this thing. So what I'm going to do to charge it from the wall is uh, improvise a little bit. <clears throat> so what we're going to do, I have an old cigarette lighter, you know, female adapter that we can adapt to a couple battery clamps. And that we're going to hook up to our battery charger. So we're going to set this at, you know, 10 amps. We're going to hook up our clamps to here and charge this boost pack that way. So I'll show you the setup once I get these uh, guys adapted here. Alright, here's the custom adapter. Cigarette lighter socket. Two clips right to the battery charger. Make sure these don't touch. We'll hook up the, the boost pack through its own cable. Okay. And let's fire this thing up. There you go, it shows that it's charging. Alright, so we got it hooked up. I'm measuring the voltage across the clamps, the charging voltage, and also the current. So on the 2 amp scale, we actually have a third, about 0.3 amps, going through the boost pack. We only have 8.5 volts. So let's increase the charger to 10 amps. Now we're charging at 1 amp here and we're at 9.9. .9. And let's try 50 amps. Now we're at 1.7 amps here and 11 volts. And this guy shows that it is charging. Okay, cool. Now, I'm curious to see what the charging current is, you know, right from a vehicle that's running. So, we could do that measurement as well. So, remember 1.6 amps at 11 volts charging uh, charging voltage. All right. Now, from a vehicle that is just sitting here, that's engines off. We're at 0 0.7 amps charging. Okay, let's start it up and see. Huh. 
now we're up to 2.3 amps. So this thing definitely needs to be charged from a running vehicle or uh, or your manual charger on 50 amps to, to get the voltage up. So that's the way to do it. Now let's uh, let it charge up and, and put it through a few tests. All right, guys. Now that we have our NOCO GB70 jump starter fully charged up, it's time to put it to the test. And uh, what I'm going to do here on the bench is attempt to measure the actual capacity of the pack and the current capability. Those are the two main characteristics that, you know, make up a battery. You know, the, the performance, uh, what it, it can and can't do. Now, as you see here, we have some numbers already. Uh, let's see, it's advertised, let's see, 12 volts, 2,000 amps. Wow, that's, uh, that seems like pretty high amperage. Most regular automotive batteries, the cranking amps are, oh, I don't know, like six, 700, maybe 900 cranking amps. Uh, again, that's way more than you would need for a regular start, but still, uh, you know, that's what they advertise. And then down here, I found it very curious. It says 15,700 joules in a 3S superscript. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what that means. Uh, I looked it up on their website, and they said this is the, uh, well, I'll, sh I'll show you exactly what it says, but uh, the fact that they have joules on here, uh, usually you don't see that on a battery. A joule is a unit of energy. I know that much. Um, so we'll clear that up. And then on the back here, also an interesting, it says battery is 56 watt hours. That's another unit of energy. So uh, I just want to clear up all those terms, get our units straight, and uh, put this thing to the test and see if it is actually capable of, of the advertised numbers. So let's go to the whiteboard and uh, do some math. Alright, so first let's see how batteries are characterized in terms of their capacity. Okay, so let's see capacity. So some common ways to, uh, that battery manufacturers you know, claim their capacity in are, I'm sure you've heard of amp hours, then like we saw here we had watt hours. Uh, if you've ever looked at your power meter that the power company uses uh, to measure the energy consumption in your house, You'll have kilowatt hours. So those are the main three uh, common ones. So what do they all these numbers mean? You know, people use them in in everyday language, but well, units. You know, we have to pay attention to our units. We're, we have to be quantitative and precise here. This is a real scientific review. So first, what I want to do is break it down to uh, just fundamental units, okay? So for example, charge what is charge? Uh, the fundamental unit of charge is an electron and that's a very very small amount and obviously talking about you know huge numbers of electrons wouldn't make sense so a more user-friendly unit is the coulomb. I don't know if you guys heard of a coulomb. Letter C. And that is approximately equal to, let me get my notes here. So how many electrons is that? It's 6.25 times 10 to the 18th power electrons. 
So that's if you move the decimal point 18 places over, that's how many electrons are in one coulomb. Okay, uh, what does that do for us? Well, uh, even if you haven't heard of a coulomb, I'm sure you've heard of amps. We use it all the time in diagnostics, right? Amp. What is an amp? It's current. It's the flow of charge or you know flow of electrons. So uh, current the unit for that is ampere amp for short letter A and that is defined as one coulomb per second so it's flow of charge so basically that's uh, you know, if you haven't heard of Coulomb before, it's nothing more than one. Uh, the amp is one Coulomb of charge per second flowing, you know, in a wire or whatever. So that's uh, that's pretty basic. Uh, now what I want to do, uh, let's see, let's draw up a battery. Okay, what is a battery? It's this black box that has two terminals on it. Okay, one terminal is positive, other terminal is negative, and always has a certain voltage, and your uh, capacity, let's say, uh, a typical automotive battery, it's about 60 amp hours. 60 amp hours. Now you can get a smaller battery here like this little motorcycle battery you see the part number is 14 LA2 this is 14 amp hours and all that means is the battery can provide one amp of current at 12 volts for 14 hours and a 60 amp hour battery you know you can do that for 60 hours or if you double the current, you get you know half the half the time, so you can do two amps for 30 hours. So that's uh, again pretty understandable. Uh, now, what I want to do here is you know define this potential. What what is a volt? We talk about volts all the time, and you can kind of picture it. You know, there's a potential difference between these two terminals. So, if you're talking about conventional charge, you know, the positive charge always wants to go to the negative terminal. Okay? And a battery charger actually forces charges from the negative to the positive in reverse, charging the battery. Okay? So, the battery in itself uh, contains electrical energy. Okay? It has energy, meaning if it's fully charged, you can do. Um, you can do work with it, meaning you connect up a load and then the charges will go from the positive to the negative, dropping in potential and doing work. Now here's where it gets fun. What's the unit of energy? I'll give you five seconds. Alright, so let's recap what we have so far. We have uh, charge in coulombs. You can express that as the number of electrons. It's just the fundamental unit of charge. Our current is the flow of um, flow of charge in amps. And that's one coulomb per second. That's the definition. Our potential is in volts. Now to define this, uh, hold on just a second. Let's first define energy. Uh, and if you said the unit for energy or work is a joule, you are correct. We did mention that before already. So let's write that down, joule J. And to define a joule, if you uh, if you look at a mechanical system, say you know you're pushing against a constant force for a certain distance, it's going to be force times the distance, or a newton times a meter. So for this, you know. Don't worry about if you don't know what a newton is, it's just a unit of force. But that's what defines energy, is force times distance. However, for electricity, energy is also defined as charge times the potential. 
Okay? So let's write C times V. So we know what charges are. And say we want to carry one coulomb of charge from our negative terminal, which is at you know zero volts relatively, let's say, you know, that's that's our uh, basically baseline to our 12 volt terminal. So the energy required, let's uh, call it, you know, W for work, would equal our charge, so 1 coulomb times 12 volts, that would equal 12 joules. So 12 joules of energy to get one coulomb of charge from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. Basically that's what your battery charger is doing. Okay? So now we're getting an idea of what they mean by joules down here. Now let's stick with the battery charger. Uh, so let's say you're pumping current, you're pumping charge from negative to positive at a rate of one amp. That's one coulomb per second. Okay? So if it took us 12 joules of energy to pump that charge uh, from negative to positive, uh, if, if we're uh, at one amp, that's basically we're pumping one coulomb per second. Now it's a, uh, now it's a rate. So uh, right from here, we can write power required to do that operation. Let's call it P equals one coulomb per second times 12 volts equals 12 joules per second. Now look at, look at this beauty. See the units, how they work out? Coulomb per second times volt equals joules per second. That's awesome because that's our definition of joules right there. See, joule is coulomb times volt. Now what is a joule per second? Now again, we're getting back to familiar units here. That's just 12 watts, which is the unit for power. Okay, now we all know watts, right? You know, 100 watt light bulb. Uh, what's an what's an automotive uh, like a brake light it was like 20 28 watts or something so that just means it's using 12 joules of energy per second and at 12 volts your uh, one coulomb per second of charge is passing through that filament so it's all related again a lot of units here but you know just go back through this and get the definition straight and this will make sense. Okay, that's that's cool. So we have our battery charger. All right, so we're using 12 watts of uh, energy. Okay, okay. Slow down. Watts is power, it's energy per unit time, right? So, <clears throat> getting ahead of myself. Let's just do another example to, to get this straight. Let's say now we're charging at 10 amps. Okay? So what, what will our power be? Now we're doing 10 coulombs per second. Again, we're overcoming a potential of 12 volts. So our power used by you know the charger is 120 watts. That's when it, you know it starts humming, and then you turn it up to 50 amps, and then it really hums. So, okay, that's uh, I think that's understandable. Uh, next segment, let's put a load on the battery and see how it works the other way, because the battery itself is capable of doing work. That's the whole point. You know, it'll turn your starter. Uh, do whatever. So we'll do that in the next segment. All right. So just a quick recap: <clears throat> what our main results are so far. We have 
found that energy or work in joules is just charge times the potential. And then power is energy per unit time, joules per second, and that's charge per second times voltage, and that's just amps times voltage, okay? And using this relationship, uh, now we can uh, actually see what these terms mean. Amp hours, watt hours, kilowatt hours in terms of battery capacity. That's where we're headed with this. So it's a little detour, but uh, I think it's worthwhile just so we're all on the same page and we're clear on the units. So let me rewrite this and uh, we'll redraw our battery and see uh, what happens when we apply a load and how we can calculate the actual battery capacity using, uh, using a load. Alright, so here are the main relationships for energy and power. Now let's draw our favorite test light on this battery. Okay, so we have a wire going to a bulb. There's film in here and it's grounded to the negative terminal. Now let's say this bulb takes one amp it allows one amp of current to flow at 12 volts. Okay? So quickly let's do uh, what's, what's the power consumption of this bulb. So we just did that. Our uh, power so let's write P equals current times voltage equals 1 amp times 12 volts. It's a 12 volt battery. Okay, so that bulb is, is a 12 watt light bulb, so it's consuming 12 joules of energy per second. That's what the battery is providing. Okay, now looking at our battery rating here, 60 amp hours, that means theoretically, you know, the, the voltage will decay. Uh, you know, in a nonlinear fashion, but ideally, this bulb will stay lit for 60 hours, right? Since we're drawing one amp. Okay, so that's that's our battery capacity, 60 amp hours. So now, uh, what we want to do is find the relationship between amp hours and watt hours or kilowatt hours, which is the specification given on the NOCO here. The, uh, the battery capacity, okay, and the battery capacity should be in what should be the actual quantity. It should be energy, right? We're storing energy in this battery. So, so basically what we see here, our battery can deliver one amp for 60 hours, right? And we just showed that uh, that's, uh, that would be at 12 volts, it's a 12 watt power consumption, okay? So from here, uh, let's write 60 amp hours at 12 volts equals, what's 60 times 12 here? Let's see, 60 times 12, 720 equals 720 and the units they kind of work themselves out you can say amps times volts times hours and remember amps times volts is watts so this is nothing more than 720 watt hours cool and this is a unit of energy, right? Because power times time is energy. That, that's how we define it. Remember, uh, watt is, <clears throat> let's see, so it's current times voltage, right? And energy is just charge times voltage. 
see this uh, per second, that's a rate. So when we multiply watts by a unit of time, you know, hours, seconds, uh, it's still a unit of time, we go back to energy, right? So let's say uh, watt is equal to joules per second. If we multiply by seconds, we get joules. That's, it's that easy. We get energy. So my question is, how many joules of energy are in this 60 amp hour 12 volt battery? So all we need to do is, so energy in a 60 amp hour 12 volt battery is ideally equal to 720 watt hours um, is equal to 720 watts times how many seconds are in an hour? 60, you know, 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. So 60 times 60, 3,600 seconds. 3,600 seconds equals multiply by 720. We get 2,592,000 joules. And we can write that more neatly as 2.6. And you just count the decimal places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 10 to the 6 joules. Okay, so that's our energy in a 60 amp hour battery. Awesome. Uh, so as you can see, in this automotive battery, we're at 720 watt hours, and our boost pack, since it's you know it's only meant to jumpstart a vehicle, obviously it's not going to have the capacity of a big automotive battery. It's uh, it says here 56 watt hours. So, I don't know, let's do 720 divided by 56. So, an automotive battery is about 12 of these guys. Okay, so that's, that's our energy capacity uh, in, in this battery right here. Uh, so, for the NOCO, let's figure out, so that was for a 60 amp hour 12 volt. 60 amp hour 12 volt battery or 720 watt hours so our NOCO GB70 uh, our, the energy is 56 watt hours claimed and that is equal to let's multiply 56 by 3600 equal to uh, 201,600 joules or we'll write it as 2.0 times 10 to the fifth joules. So that's how much energy is in our NOCO boost pack. We can convert this back to amp hours for our experiment and see you know how how fast we can drain this thing <clears throat> so converting back into amp hours we just need to divide 56 by 12 56 divided by 12 4.6 amp hours so if we divide by 12 volts equals 4.6 amp hours at 12 volts. Cool. So that's just to give you kind of a relative feel of how much energy this boost pack claims to, uh, to have. So 4.5 amp hours compared to, for example, 
you know, a motorcycle battery like this is 14 amp hours. So it would be about three times the capacity of the boost pack. And the automotive 60 amp hour battery is like, you know, 15 times the, the capacity or a little, a little less than that. So now, let's put this boost pack to the test. Enough of this whiteboard, uh, you know, physics or whatever. Let's uh, let's play with some loads.